Today I'm going to look at the JYE Tech DSO-138 oscilloscope, which can be found for $20 to $30. I'm not going to go through all the features of it, but I wanted to look at the limitations and useful aspects of it. I'm using a bench supply to give approximately 9 volts to the scope, and I'm also using a BK Precision old style function and sweep generator. With the dial I can adjust between 0 and 2.0 and then there's a multiplier select knob where I can choose 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000 and 1 million. So that lets me easily jump between say 100 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz and then I can fine tune it if I want. I'm starting out with a sine wave around 100 hertz to the best of the ability to set it on the knob and I'm confirming it says 100 hertz on both scopes. Also the peak to peak voltage is about 3 or so and it says 2.9 something to 3 on the DSO-138. What I wanted to do was try changing the frequency and see if the DSO-138 can keep up with the real scope and see if it actually works equally well with different kinds of waveforms. The DSO-138 claims to be able to do 200 kilohertz analog bandwidth, so I'm expecting something a lot less than that to actually make it through. Both scopes seem to match up with 100 hertz and peak to peak about 3 volts. So I'm going to change the frequency to 1k approximate. So now it's 1 kilohertz and 1 kilohertz approximately. We still have about 3.0 to 3.1 volts peak to peak and about 3 volts peak to peak. So now I'll change to 10 kilohertz and I'll have to adjust the horizontal to get a cleaner wave on both scopes. So after changing the time base on both scopes we have about 10 kilohertz and about 3.1 to 3.2 volts peak to peak on the main scope and about 10 kilohertz and about the same 2.9 something to 3 volts peak to peak on the DSO-138. So far it seems to be holding up. Also the duty cycle it's about 50 percent on the main scope and about 50 percent on the DSO-138. I'm going to go to 100 kilohertz now and see what happens. I'm going to have to adjust again. So now we have just over 100 kilohertz, 102 or 104 on the main scope and again 3.1 3.0 volts peak to peak. On the DSO-138 we have just over 100 kilohertz as well, 104, 105, 106, and now we've got 2.8 volts peak to peak, so we're starting to see an attenuation. So this is only at 100 kilohertz where it's supposed to have a 200 kilohertz analog bandwidth. So now I'm just going to use the variable adjustment to fine-tune the frequency just to see. So I'm increasing it about 125 kilohertz now. The amplitude is still about 3.1, 3.0 peak to peak on the main scope, but now it's down to only 2.6 something, 2.5 something volts peak to peak on the DSO-138 but it's still reading 127, 126 kilohertz, close to the 125 to 128, it's fluctuating on both scopes a bit. So if I keep increasing the frequency, now I'm at 200 kilohertz on the main scope, well, 192 to 200. I still have 3 to 3.1 volts peak to peak on the main scope. But now, down on the DSO-138, I can still measure 198 or so kilohertz, close to the 200 kilohertz. But now I'm down to 2.25 volts peak to peak. 
and the waveform looks a little more jittery and irregular. And I can't adjust the time base any finer. So now backing the frequency off to see where I start getting a restored waveform as well as peak to peak voltage. I start seeing a cleaner sine wave around 90 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz, depending. But I still have an attenuated waveform. It's only 2.77 volts peak to peak. So if I keep lowering the frequency until I see around 3.0 to 3.1 volts peak to peak, I'll have to change the time scale. It looks like around 50 to 60 kilohertz, I finally start seeing close to the 3.0 to 3.1 volts peak to peak sine wave, and it looks a lot more accurate. So it looks like for the sine wave, we're getting about 25% bandwidth out of the 200 kilohertz advertised bandwidth. Now if I change that to square wave, starting over with 100 hertz square wave, and knowing that the function generator is a bit hard to control with the knobs, so we're starting out with about 102 hertz and 3.2 to 3.3 volts peak to peak on the main scope, and 102, very close to 102 hertz, and 3.14 to 3.22 volts peak to peak, it looks like. So it's very close to start with. So if I change that to about a kilohertz and readjust the time base, now we have 1.02 kilohertz and peak to peak 3.28 to 3.36 on the main scope and 1.02 kilohertz and 3.18 to 3.22 volts peak to peak so it's close enough still within acceptable offset that we're observing. If I go to 10 kilohertz and readjust the time base at about 10 kilohertz we have approximately 10.2 kilohertz to 10.4 kilohertz showing and 3.2 to 3.36 volts peak to peak on the main scope and we have close as well 10.29 kilohertz and 3.2 to 3.3 volts peak to peak on the DSO 138. If I zoom in on both traces trying to get a more stable reading now I can settle on 10.29 kilohertz on the main scope but as I zoom in, the DSO-138 is showing 11 kilohertz now, and we can see the square wave is losing its squareness. So I'll go back to the 1 kilohertz and compare. At 1 kilohertz, the DSO-138 does look a lot more square. So at 10 kilohertz, you can still see that you've got a square wave. So for visual purposes, it will do its job for 20 or $30. But if you're looking for accuracy of the waveform quality and trying to do a frequency measurement, it's maybe not the best product at that point. The duty cycle is still showing close to 50%. And the voltage reading, now we've got 3.4 volts peak to peak versus 3.2 to 3.3 on the main scope. So that's still relatively okay. We don't really want to be doing anything too critical other than just getting a visualization of maybe checking that we do have a changing GPIO on an Arduino or something. And maybe the duty cycle and a rough idea of the frequency. So if this is 10 kilohertz, let's see what happens if we go to 100 kilohertz.
Well, now we have 104 kilohertz and about 3.28 to 3.36 volts peak to peak on the main scope. And we have 104 or so kilohertz and peak to peak now it's showing 3.7 volts and it looks more like a sine wave than a square wave on the DSO-138. Let's see if we can clean that up by backing off the frequency. So at about 35 kilohertz we start seeing more of a square wave but it's still highly distorted and we increase the frequency you can still see it's representative of a square wave at 50 kilohertz but it's really inaccurate to look at and get a true idea of your signal of course as you get closer to 200 kilohertz it's again just like the sine wave it's very distorted the amplitude is all over the place and this is just a pure non-square wave signal at this point. So this is the square wave at about close to 20 kilohertz and well it's relatively square and sine wave at 20 kilohertz is okay as well for visual purposes. So for audio projects if you just want a visualizer for any sound generators or analog synths or things like this. Using this in a hobby project capacity is probably the only thing I would use it for, which is what I bought it for, just for fun and to add a gimmick to some sound effect projects. Hopefully this evaluation can help somebody else make a better decision about if this is the product for them or not. For 20 or 30 dollars and for low frequency audio range especially, but definitely under 50 kilohertz just for playing around with or getting a quick view of what's happening on an Arduino port I would recommend it for that but not much more